Welcome to the City Impact Church podcast. Join us weekly to listen to sermons from our Sunday services or our special events. For more information, visit cityimpactchurch.com or find us on our Facebook page. We pray you'll be inspired and challenged by this week's message. But uh, everybody just say pressure. pressure. You know, it's true, um, even as we talk with these guys, and of course you can, I've, I've often saying to youth pastors, anything can sound good from the platform, but life can be tough at times, right? You heard what Pastor Mark Ramsey went through, and of course I was just talking with uh, one of the other pastors up there uh, that uh, Pastor Benny bought, and man, a story we might get to share sometime of his journey. And even Pastor Benny, I'm sure he'll finish about the about the uh, bankruptcy, but you know, that, 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 that amounts to a lot of pressure right there, right? Uh, they were talking about the, the pressure that maybe I went under when we built that building. I said, no, that was a breeze, you know, and I just, to be honest, thank God that really to be 35 years, and, and I haven't seen the sort of pressure that some of these people have seen. I thank God for that. Um, maybe I wasn't built to cope with it. I don't know. God felt sorry for me, but life, life, life sometimes can be tough and it can be like a battle. That's why I love that song that we wrote into the battlefield, you know. Now, we know that the battle is not designed to wear us out. It's not designed to take us out. The battle's designed and not intended for you to be overcome, but that you can be an overcomer. Everybody say overcomer. The promises in the book of Revelation are to he who overcomes. Amen. And so we're to become victors and not victims. No two ways about it. It is true that going uphill is a lot easier than going downhill. Summit is all about climbing higher. And every time we climb higher, I mean, I've climbed uh, Mount Taranaki, Mount Egmont, and a couple of you have as well. But, you know, climbing uphill can be sometimes a struggle. Uh, riding a bike, let's be honest, it's fun going downhill. But who wants to go higher? About three people. You responded a lot pa- better to Pastor Benny. I know he's got the accent. I love to preach like Pastor Samuel, but you know, without the accent in New Zealand here to preach to New Zealanders with a little bit of passion and verga, they think you're kind of like strange, eh, Don? Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I just want to race through this. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. You think, church, I took fast? I got nothing on Pastor Samuel. Nothing. (laughs) It happened after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and the others with them, the Amorites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is a man of God, the king of Israel, and these people were coming to battle. So there's great pressure here. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude, just like those giants that Mark spoke about, a great multitude is coming against you from the sea, from Syria. And he talked about it. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek God and proclaimed, everybody say proclaimed, a fast in all of Israel. Now listen, we know that the world has got this term P, right? Drugs. Right? Man, if I was Benny Perez, I'd probably take that a little further, you know. <laughs> I got the jacket and all. But in any case, it's the 16th letter of the alphabet. Just want you to remember that. But I want to give you 16 principles, keys on how to overcome, how to release the pressure. Pastors have got pressure. How do they grow a church? There's financial pressure, maybe marital pressure. These principles will work for you, and it's taken right here out of Second Chronicles. To release a pressure, can I just tell you, church, that the first thing you need to do is to start to proclaim some things. The miracles in your mouth, start to proclaim. Proclaim the victory. Proclaim the answer. I loved what uh, Pastor Samuel said. He said, you don't pray about your problem. You begin to proclaim the promises of God, the miracles of God, amen? And so proclaim is your first key, your first principle in order to release the pressure to take you to another level, to take you higher. In verse 4, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and all the cities of Judah came to seek the Lord. The second principle is partnership. 
two are better than one. If we work together, church, I was talking to them about the building and how did we do that? We worked together. You know, two are better than one. One will put a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. Amen. And so partnership coming together. That's what this year's summit is all about. Us coming together. That's what we're here for. And so your second key is to partnership with other people in order to achieve your dreams. Now, if your marriage is going through a few issues, start to proclaim. My wife did that many years ago when I wasn't, you know, pulling my weight. You start to proclaim. She didn't proclaim to me. She proclaimed in the spiritual realm. You begin to speak some things, and you've got to join together. Then it says in verse 5, Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and he prayed. Hello. You know, it is so true, friend, that these principles, they are principles that never fail. Words that begin with P, pray, proclaim, partner. You know, pray, pray. This is the third principle because prayer changes things. I'm just trying to help you today. Pastors, you want to build your church? you got to pray. I ask pastors, how many, how many times a week do you gather your church together to pray? I've met pastors. I don't even have a prayer meeting. Hello? Hello? I mean, we must pray. Let, let's just go through this quickly. Oh, Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the Lord God of heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Great prayer here. And in your hand is there not power and might? so that no one is able to stand with, uh, withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel? Let me just mention this word, people. It's a very important part of the story. Pastor Benny talked about it. The church is about God and people. Hello. You know, your people. Man, I'm glad you're here. Imagine preaching to empty seats. Imagine if Summit was only... You know, uh, five people. But people are so important, and, and people, we've got to attract people. We need people. Amen? Nudge your neighbor and say, hey, you're needed here. The fourth principle is this word people. Did you know there's only two kinds of people in the world? And I'm not talking about male and female and all the confusion. There's the saved and the unsaved. There's the redeemed and the unredeemed. There's the saints and the sinners. There's the repentant and the unrepentant. Two kinds of people. The people of the devil, the people of God. There's the people of the world and the people of the Holy Spirit. There's the people of the natural versus the people of the supernatural. Two kinds of people. That's why we choose this day whom we will serve, right? Now, I want you to note they are actually opposed to one another. I don't want you to get a victim mentality here. But why is the world opposed? Jesus said the world will oppose you. You shouldn't get upset when the world doesn't like you. It's because it's of a different spirit. Jesus said a different father. Galatians 4.29, on the screen it says, He who is born of the flesh persecuted he who was born of the spirit. Even so it is now. This battle between the saved and the unsaved, the redeemed and the unredeemed has been going on, hey, for a long time. Let's continue on, verse 7. You, Lord, gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever, and they dwell in it and have built a sanctuary. This is, this is the king praying here. And built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if the disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, amazing how... People will pray when these things begin to happen. We will stand before this temple in your, in your presence and will cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. This fifth principle, this presence, my Bible tells me, friend, and if you're a pastor here, listen now, it's not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. We need the presence of God. If we don't have the presence of God, if we don't have His presence, friend, the manifestation of His Spirit, we got nothing. We're just a social club. And so we need the presence. We've got to cultivate the presence of God in our lives. In verse 10, it says, Now here are your people, Amon, Moab, and Mount Sion. And it says, You would not let Israel invade when they came out to the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarded, rewarding us by coming 
to throw us out of your possession. Everybody say possession. Which you have given us to inherit. So the sixth principle, you've got to possess your possession. You've got to begin to possess something. The nations, New Zealand, hallelujah, is our inheritance church. Hello? We're not finished yet. And so there's a possession. I'm just giving you some principles. Maybe with us, your finances. You're not a pastor, but you're a truck driver. Why don't you begin to possess? I've seen truck drivers become millionaires. You need to begin to possess. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes upon you. Here it is. This number seven P word is power. Without the Lord, without the Lord, there is no power. Amen. I mean, with his miracles, with his healings, whatever it is. But this power, really, there's only one source of power. And we look to Jesus. Power. We need the power. Of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, All power has been given unto me. All power. Wow. We need the power of God. Verse 13. Now, all of Judea with their little ones stood there uh, at, with their wives and children stood before the Lord. I don't have time to be funny, by the way, just to, so I'm just racing through this, but I could make a joke right now. I've, I've actually got more jokes than Pastor Benny. I actually have a joke book. And if you don't think I'm funny, you want to come to Mount Wellington when I preach on a Sunday night when my wife's not there. I am not only funny, I'm naughty. But I've got to get through these 16 Ps before I need one. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon. Let's, let's just have a quick look. And it says here, he prophesied. Everybody say prophesied. 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 Friend, if ever there was a day. That's what I love about my wife. She is one of the most prophetic person. I did not say pathetic like Pastor Samuel was talking about, but, but prophetic. People I know. There's power in the prophetic. Amen? Power in it. And, and so we need the Word of God. We need the preached prophetic Word of God, the now Word, the prophesied Word. And so here it was here, this key number eight. He preached. He preached and prophesied. This wasn't just some motivational safe message. And you know, I quite like motivational messages. I used to train insurance salesmen. I got little motivational messages. I used to do Zig Ziglar, me and Paul Adams. We used to listen to Zig Ziglar tapes and ring each other up and, and motivate each other and, and encourage each other and, and talk positive to each other. And then we both read the Bible about a proverb where it says, you know, that a neighbor ringing, uh, not ringing, sorry, is that in the Bible? Is it in the Bible ringing? No. Um, but. You know, a neighbor, if he's heard too often in his neighbor's house, will become a, you know. So, so in any case, we stop, stopped it every morning. But motivational, I, I got motivational statements coming out of my ears. I've got actually another book on motivation. But we don't just need nice motivational messages, safe messages. We need the prophesied word of God, hallelujah, that's going to cut sharper than a two-edged sword, amen. So he prophesied, this key eight, he prophesied. Prophecy will change a nation. God told me many years ago that my best asset lied at my side. I wasn't talking about my teddy bear. I'm talking about my wife, my best asset. Every time I hear her, like the way she introduced Pastor, I say, I need to release this woman more. Listen, all of you, Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, here comes a prophecy. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid into the battlefield, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, this giant that's coming towards you, this problem you've got, this challenge you've got. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They shall come, surely come up by the ascent, and you will find them in the end of the brook before the wilderness of the battle. You do not need to fight this battle. Position. 
Position yourselves. This isn't just for leaders and pastors. This is for us all. I know you're positioned at Summit. Good choice. Tonight, good choice. But are you willing to take your place to see the victory? Are you willing to position yourself? Hallelujah. There's a place we've heard about over the weekend to position yourself. In your marriage, you've got to position yourself correctly. In your workplace, you've got to position yourself correctly. Every part of the body doing its bit causes a growth. Pastor, it's not hard to build a church if you can just get your people. Hallelujah. Every part of the body doing its share causes a growth for the glory of God. So it says in verse 17, position yourself, number nine principle. Yeah, you following me? Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear nor be dismayed. He's still prophesying. Tomorrow go out against him, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites, the children of the Gothelites, the children of the Karhites, all those, stood up to praise. Everybody say praise. praise. They stood up to praise. I said they stood up to praise. I said, somebody ought to stand up and praise the Lord right now. They stood up to praise. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen a singer singing, sitting down? No, they stand up. So stand up and praise. But okay, sit down now. Praise. See, the tenth key, church people, pastors, whoever you are, is you've got to have this attitude of praise. We heard about happiness. We heard about joyfulness and all that. But if you lose your praise, you lose your ability to fight. You lose your praise, you lose your strength. You know, you know that if you lose your praise, you lose a battle. And so in the midst of the battle, hallelujah. And man, I know pastors go through things. Hey, everybody goes through some things, but you don't stay in those things. You don't camp in the valleys. You go through the valleys, hallelujah. But the thing is, is that you praise your way out of it. Prison to praise, right, Don? Remember that book? I know you do. You go back that far. Verse 20. So they rose early in the morning. Do you know Don, Pastor Don McDonnell, his dad, used to be my song leader in Wangarei many years ago. He'd get up there and it would be rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say. Right? right? And, 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 and this is a day. Had the actions, didn't he? Rather big actions. No jeans, of course. Particularly on the girls. And his backslidden son would come in occasionally. I mean... Don got saved. I thought, there is a God in heaven. (laughs) And what he's been through. They rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness. And Sounds like the back of Stratford, Toko, but it's not. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. I like this thought. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in His prophets, and you shall prosper. I'll pick on Pastor Don. Isn't it true, Don? Not too many people believe the preacher these days. I mean, honestly. And yet the Bible says, believe God and believe His prophets. Now, we worship Jesus. We don't worship the pastor. But do we need a pastor? Absolutely. The pastor brings the word of God. And so many people are listening to so many people. I was talking to a lady this morning at the breakfast. and I said, what church? I used to know years ago. We're in the same church. I'm talking decades. I said, what church are you in now? She said, well, that's a sad question. How can you prosper? <laughs> it says here, believe the Lord 
You'll be established, yes, but believe as prophets and you shall prosper. Did I say they were perfect P, perfect pastors? Did I say that? No, I didn't. I'm just saying what the, the book says. And so number 11, we've got to believe God and believe the prophets, the pastors or whatever here. But many Christians may be established, but I know many Christians are not prospering. Why? Why? Because they're not believing the word that's preached. They take it with a grain of salt or they have an opinion about it, do their own thing or something else they hear on YouTube doesn't align with what he says. And so they become hearers of the word and not doers of the word. And so when the pastor says, let's pray, well, we don't really need to pray. Well, let's fight. Well, that's for everybody else. You know, let's come out to the working. Well, you know, I've got other things on. Exodus 12, you know the story where the children of Israel went out with articles of silver and gold and says they plundered the Egyptians. God wants us to prosper. We need to prosper. I know you want to prosper. I believe there's keys to prosper. Third John says, Beloved, I pray in every year of your life, above all else, that you may prosper and be in good health. It's God's will for us to prosper. It wasn't great what Pastor Samuel said, holy, healed, healthy, happy, humble. And many had consoled the people. He appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army saying, Praise the Lord. And his mercy and joy is forever. And they began to sing uh, to praise the Lord. And when they began to sing, Praise the Lord, the Lord set up ambushes against the people. Now here was the power of God being manifested after the prayer, after the praise song. Pick it up in verse 23. We're nearly through. I thought about, well, I nearly said I thought about getting my wife on the couch, but that, would be, that wouldn't come across that well, would it? I mean, I mean, I thought about having her on the couch, me over here asking her questions, and then I could find out all what I wanted to know. Like, how much did that new dress, dress cost her last night? And, For well, the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of, of Mount Sar to utterly kill and destroy them when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sir. I could ask you some other questions I'm just thinking about right now. <laughs> so when Judah came to the place, everybody say the place. Yes. Overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards a multitude and there were dead bodies falling. This was a giant now. This was a problem. This was a, the thing that was coming against them. There were dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, the plunder, they found among themselves an abundance of valuables and dead bodies and precious jewelry. They stripped it off for themselves, hallelujah, more than they could carry. Man, I could get excited right here. And people say, well, what are you doing as a man of God? You shouldn't prosper that much. And there were three days gathering the plunder because there was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled the valley of Berker. And there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of that place, everybody say place, place. was called the valley of Berak until this day. And then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them. Am I talking as fast as Pastor Samuel? <laughs> to go back to the Jews and the Jews. You really want me to see the, the, the black dance. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was all on the kingdoms of the countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for the God had given him peace all around. The 13th key is place, friend. There is a place that God has appointed for you to prosper. I'm talking about the house of God. I'm talking about the local church. I'm, you need to be in that place. Amen. It's a place. Hallelujah. The Bible, the Old Testament talked about the place being the temple. And here was it. You've got to be in the right place. Amen. Because number 14 principle is a plunder. Is a plunder. 
I, I'm not sure whether people really want it because unless you work the principles of God, uh, prayer, hallelujah, pro- proclamation. You know, Israel came out with the silver and the gold. We read about it before. Here they did. And of course, the 15th one, the 15th principle is peace. Man, I want a church of peace. I've been saying to my team, I just want to be happy. I just want people to be happy. I want them to enjoy the journey. All the silly problems that sometimes people cause. I don't know how, 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 how Pastor Samuel does it when I said, you know, when I said, what about dealing with peace? He said, yeah, I fire people, but they feel like, you know, they leave feeling they've just been hired, but they've actually been fired. I think, how do you do that? But, but enough to say that I just want people to be happy. I just want peace around the situation. A lot of people live in chaos. They don't live in peace. Peace is beautiful. That's why when I'm alone with God, just me and God, I'm in my blissful place. I'm in my happy place. And so I just love City Impact Church because the majority of time, it's so peaceful. We don't have a lot of arguments in church. Pastor Tim, we were talking before to one of our international pastors. And elders can vouch. We've never in 34 years had a church split or anything that smelt like one. Some churches are fighting the whole time. And the eldership meeting nobody wants to go to. I've, I've been... I've been in some of these churches, reconciliation, and literally fist fights. It's, it's quite good if you don't want to be the man of God and you just want to scrap. You know, I quite like it. But, but you know, I've, been in, I've, I've seen them throw things at each other and, and I've, I get angry and, and argue and fight and there's no peace. I've been in churches like that. I've been in, con- I've been in congregations that have felt like a fridge and one half of the church is sitting on that side with their backs turned to the other half on this side. I mean, literally, trying to help churches. And often, of course, are small churches. That's why they're small, because there's friction there and there's no peace there. And that's why I love City Impact Church, because there's a lot of peace around here. Who doesn't want peace in their life, in their marriage, in their work situation? In their... I mean, we want peace, right? What do you think the Indians smoke the peace pipe for? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> now listen to this as I close. Just talking about this letter P, which I felt was the right message just to bring everything that they're saying together. But if you play too much in life, you'll lose a plot. Too much pleasure leads to prison instead of the palace. So it's all about P is for purpose. P is for purpose. There's a statement that comes up on the screen that I wrote a while back, and it says, out of Second Chronicles 20, when God's people partner together, position themselves and proclaim, pray, prophesy, praise, believe the prophets, then His presence is manifest in the place which brings a power that causes possession, plunder, prosperity, and peace. Who doesn't want a church like that? I want a church like that. So no pressure. N-O-P. Get it? I am so clever at times. N- you don't get it, do you? A, B, C, D, N, O, P. No pressure. Just that I'd say. So if you want, friend, to overcome and to come out the other side, when you're going up a hill facing a battle, facing a giant, put these principles into practice and you will find that the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life. Would you give God a big hand right now?